Thank you, Brad. Welcome, everybody, to the Mullins Memorial Center in Amherst, Massachusetts. It's the dawning of a new age here in UMass. This is a brand new state of the art $50 million center. As we begin with our Advil starting lineups for West Virginia, the guy to watch tonight, Mike Boyd, one of their guards, Marsalis Basie, Wilson, Green, and Robinson. There you see Gail Catlett. He's won 422 games in his illustrious 21 year career. For the UMass Minutemen, Lou Rowe, look for him in the middle. And Harper Williams, number 31, has come back from a hand injury to make some things happen for that man, John Calipari. You see his record against West Virginia. Good to have you with us. The crowd's been rocking and waiting for this opening tap. Moment one here at the Mullen Center. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you, and we're ready to go. And West Virginia gets the first possession. Marsalis Basie make things happen. Opens with a quick jumper. Can't get it. It will remain West Virginia ball. Get a look there at Lou Rowe. The ball went off his hands out of bounds. West Virginia last in the Atlantic 10 in field goal shooting. But they've got a powerful front line. West Virginia Mountaineers come into tonight's game 10 and 6, 3 and 3 in the Atlantic 10, tied for fourth place with George Washington. UMass, the defending champions in the A-10, 5 and 1 in the conference, and they've won seven straight. Rebound to Barbie. This is Derek Kellogg. Tony Barbie, number 22. Inside to Harper Williams. The lefty puts up an air ball. Rebounded by Lou Rowe. Put back by Williams. UMass foul on Lou Rowe. Lou Rowe got Marsalis Basie going by. <laughs> University of Massachusetts got three opportunities to score their first basket, and West Virginia coach Gail Catlett knows that they simply cannot give the Minutemen more than one opportunity at the basket. They've got to do a better job on their defensive board. Officials tonight, Tom Lopes, Jim Burr, and Art McDonald. It's Marsalis Basie out to Pervarius Green. And a foul off the ball. And who do we have? Do we have Lou Rowe again? No. It's going to be Derek Kellogg picking up the foul, the point guard for the Minutemen. So the first on and Kellogg. The Kellogg uh, figuring a good job running, running the offense. Not going to shoot a lot. Well, he's a fellow who can shoot the ball, but just doesn't. Concentrates on getting everybody where they're supposed to be. Mike Boyd, shot clock at 38, plenty of time in this possession for the Mountaineers. Kellogg's going to have his hands full with Basie. Basie pretty quick with the basketball in his hand, does a nice job with the penetration. A step out by Harper Williams. That's a great job by Williams to help out on that screen. Little row, runner by Basie, gets his own rebound. Starts it all over. <laughs> West Virginia got a nice little elbow in there. He's a strong guy. He's a little fella, but he's very strong. He just moved Harper Williams right out of the way. Mike Boyd looking inside. Boyd's not really going to step up and shoot it. He's going to penetrate to the basket. This is pretty good defense by UMass right here. It certainly is. Shot clock coming up on 20 seconds. Still an awful lot of time. Ricky Robinson having some trouble. Robinson's much better closer to the basket. You see Basic glance over his shoulder at the shot clock. They got to make something happen now. Basie throws it away. Good patience on the West on the UMass ball club. Good patience on defense. That's a very good point, Dave. You don't want to hurry things on the defensive end. I think you've got to credit John Calipari's big men there. They did a nice job stepping out and helping with the screens. So West Virginia not able to make that penetration. Mike Williams comes in for Kellogg. He's number 10 for UMass. And he is instant offense off the bench. This is one of those fellows who never met a shot he didn't like. Harper Williams, baseline, lefty, can't get it. Loose ball coming up. Phil Wilson comes up with it. Williams wearing, wearing that soft wrap on his right hand. That's the hand he broke. Hello, look at the action on the board. Harper Williams comes up with the board. Calipari pushing his club up the floor. Mike Williams, 4 3. That's what he's in the ballgame to do, Dave. Boy, quickly, deep down to Robinson. Does he save it? Yes, he does. Basic. Nails it. Three pointer. West Virginia leads 3 2. Robinson's built like a tight end, and he made a catch like a tight end. And now we've got a technical on Calipari. First one of the building, and John doesn't even get to the five minute mark. Seven. He didn't even get to the three minute mark. 17 06 to go. First half, and Jimmy Burr. 
Nails Jed Calipari for a tech. Well, now, everybody here at UMass has been really charged up about the opening of this building. Well, boy, that's an awfully early tee. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll bet it's the earliest one you've seen this year. I know it is for me. Marsalis Basie. 75 percenter at the line this is the first well I think one thing that that signifies there you get a look at the home court advantage that Marsalis Basie is taking a look at one thing that that early technical signifies is the magnitude of this basketball game University of Massachusetts leading the Atlantic 10 but this West Virginia team three and three in the a 10 at the moment was the preseason coaches pick to win the Atlantic 10 they're very talented they just simply haven't played as well as they might have up to this point in the season. Everybody in the A-10 is sort of waiting for them to explode. And one of the problems for the Mountaineers, they've played poorly on the road, as you can see on that play by Basie. Mountaineers 0-5 on the road. Really two different teams on the road. John Calipari now, he's got that one technical. He gets another one, and he's gone. It becomes a piece of uh, UMass trivia. First coach to <laughs> <you> get run. <laughs> he's not looking for that. Not at all. Tony Barbie strokes from three. Got it. Barbie is a fine shooter, and he's going to have to shoot that because you saw the way the defense collapsed on Harper Williams. 17 three pointer of the season for Tony Barbie. Two mass leading 6 4. Look at the defense by UMass. Jerome Malloy. Here's Ricky Robinson. Left handed baseline jumper's good. That's about as far as Robinson's range goes, and that's a good job by Robinson to step out there. You've got to take what the defense is going to give you. Mike Williams. Nice job. Sure was. Comes Basie. Got numbers. Boyd goes up strong and scores. Mike Boyd. It's the leading field goal percentage shooter in the A-10, Mike Boyd. That's what he's great at, getting to the basket. Mountaineers by three early on. Jerome Malloy for three. Jerome Malloy is 36 threes, a 41 percenter from three point range. Tie ball game at eight. Can't give him that kind of time. Man to man defense for both of these teams. Green. The base who gives it up to Mike Boyd. Williams is doing a great job battling against Robinson inside. Now, Robinson's hit those two jump shots, Robinson. but Williams with his defense inside has forced him out to the perimeter. You back up. Williams gets a free ride all the way in. Defense opened up. He took advantage. Tie ball game at 10. Basie lost him. Nobody came to help. It's green guarded by Barbie. Mike Boyd. Great defense on the inside by UMass. They're doing a tremendous job in there. Here's Basie. Williams matches up much better with him quickness wise. Robinson. Harper Williams, two of the better left-handers you'll see. Loose ball, Lou Rowe. Big fan favorite, you'll hear his name a lot tonight. Here at Amherst Mass, 10-10 ball game. And Barbie works his way into the paint and draws a foul on Basie. They actually called the foul on Robinson, Dave. First break here from the Mullen Center. 14-31 left, we're tied at 10, UMass in West Virginia. Last time you saw UMass home game, it was at the cage just last Friday. They closed it down to Division I basketball. Now the Mullen Center, that's where we are tonight. And one constant, the fans, the UMass student body. Came in mass today, and this is a beautiful, I mean gorgeous, state-of-the-art building. Named after the late state representative here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, William D. Mullins. You can see they even have that little crystal ball there that they used to see prom. <laughs> That's right. Brought back memories, didn't it? <laughs> Mullen Center holds 9,493 folks. The cage held 4,058. Kellogg, four, number 14, back into the game for UMass. Dana Dingle, number three, is also in. West Virginia out of that timeout in his zone defense. And you better find Barbie. Boyd comes up with a miss. Here comes Basie. Three on two. Basie to the hole and can't get it. And Lou Rowe comes up with it. And back comes UMass. Jerome Malloy has it knocked away and a foul on the play. And right now let's get to Chris Fowler at our ESPN studios. Dave, the game you've been tracking in Champaign, ninth-ranked Iowa, trying for four straight Big Ten wins. They've trailed most of the night, but 
Kevin Smith shakes off Rennie Clemens. Now it's the Hawkeyes by a deuce. Back to you guys. All right, back here in the Atlantic 10. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. And a tie ball game at the 14 minute mark 10 10 UMass and West Virginia. The jump ball, the possession arrow. That will remain <laughs> You know, you know, this is very interesting. We've just opened the building here. They don't have a possession arrow. Their possession arrow is a guy sitting over at the scorer's table pointing one way or the other. I'm looking. I'm no, looking no, we got to go down. He's got a left shirt on. Keep going, guys. There he is, that man right there. He is the possession arrow. Now, wonder if he's wearing something on his ear so he can tell which hand he's supposed to point. Seated immediately to his right was Shelly Poe, the sports information director for West Virginia. She's over there to keep him honest. I don't think you have to worry about that. I'm told he's a, he's a minister. I don't know. If you're a basketball fan, I don't know. <laughs> Figure somebody just forgot to bring it. We have a 50 million state-of-the-art building, and we have no possession arrow. Well, it's in the capable hands of the Reverend Bob Price. <laughs> <laughs> Gail Catlett. He doesn't trust him. That's really, that's a piece of work there, boy. You know, details, details, <laughs> details. I mean, come on. They... <laughs> that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful. Shot clock coming up on 15 seconds for UMass. Inside at 10, Lou Rowe in a little bit of trouble. Upper oh. Williams turned. What did he get away with one there? West Virginia ball. Zone defense for West Virginia. Marsalis Basie, an exciting player. Boyd for various green has it sent back by Harper Williams. Green persistent and scores. Valerius Green. This is the first game in about three or four where Green's been completely healthy. Oh geez. Wilson just knocked Harper Williams to the floor. This game has been very, very intense. Ah! And get the, the rip and you heard for various green. On we're, key. We're, on cue, right there, boy. We brought you up close and personal with that one. West Virginia by two, set back by Harper Williams, saved by Kellogg. Here comes UMass. And a dangle slides in, gets it. And a dangle on the board, his first bucket of the evening. 12 12 ball game. And a reach in on Harper Williams. He was beaten by Ricky Robinson on the post up. Tell you what, how intense is Harper Williams when he was out? There was about the second week in Harper January. UMass was not playing ball, well, and Harper was sitting out a couple, three games. Game he went into the locker room and gave his teammates what four got in everybody's face. Turned things around. Some substitutions from Gail Catlett's ball club. He brings in Jeremy Botkin, number 40. Now, Botkin, this is Botkin's first game in a while. West he's missed the last six ball games. Stress fracture. Outside three, and that's a good looking stroke. Tracy Shelton knocks down a three. His 20th of the season. It's 15 12, West Virginia. West Virginia in that zone. Sort of a 2 3. Basie and now Shelton in the ball game, putting some pressure on the ball outside. Bernard Robinson, number 42 for UMass, one of their bigger players, and a turnover, and here comes Basie. Ball knocked away nicely by Kennard Robinson. He'll get a chance to finish. Can he do it? He saves it. And they start the offense, but he stepped out of bounds. Called by Jim Burr. 11.36 left here in the first half. It's West Virginia vying for its first road win. The Mountaineers lead it by three. Welcome back, everybody, to the Mullen Center. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner, the Dan and Dave Show here in central Massachusetts. The Mountaineers leading by three. And so here's those a look guys at the are winning the battle against the Usher. And while we're talking about the battle in the Atlantic 10, UMass on top, you see West Virginia there. This is a critical stretch that's starting here for West Virginia. And they're the surprise, I guess, really, of the A-10 is St. Joe's there in second place. You bet four and two, St. Joe Hawks. You know, the Atlantic 10 is a great basketball league, recognized by basketball people as a great league. But there's such good balance in the A-10. They're beating one another up. They may actually be hurting the chances for more than three teams to get to the NCAA tournament. Quite possibly. Tracy Shelton inside to Ricky Robinson. Robinson. I can set back oh. again. Oh, baby, get it out of the house. 
Now, Botkin is a guy who can stick the 15-foot jump shot, and I think where Botkin makes a mistake here is he takes the ball in the lane. He's got to shoot it from out there because as he takes it into the lane, my goodness, he barely got that ball out of his hand. Harper Williams, you mentioned tenacity. Better make, better make that with a capital T. Sent back a cup. UMass has been very, very aggressive on the defensive end of the court. Now Lou Rowe draped all over Robinson. Shelton had to change. Shot clock at three, two. Sent away, turnover, West Virginia. Macy was looking for the roll and didn't get it. Be interesting to see how long Botkin can go. He just had the cast taken off his foot the other day. He has not practiced. He's coming off the stress fracture left ankle. Botkin takes a seat. Wilson comes back in as well as Mike Boyd. Number 45, Phil Wilson, who, by the way, said to say hello to his folks. These kids get on TV and they want you to do all those things for them, Dave. Now we've got an offensive foul against Derek Kellogg. The clear out, the call by Artie McDonald and John Calipari biting his tongue there. Absolutely. Picked up a, he picked up a tech <laughs> at the 1706 mark. Second foul on Kellogg. Normally he would be more demonstrative about such an occurrence, but he can't afford to be. He does not have one to give. <laughs> no, he's already given one. <laughs> West Virginia by three, 15-12. It's been a while since UMass has scored a bucket. The defense by UMass has been outstanding here, particularly 15 feet in. Again, I think that's important because West Virginia is a team that doesn't really shoot the perimeter jump shot well. You mentioned Boyd. If Boyd is going to hurt you 31, it's going to be off the dribble like right here. And that's just a great job by Mike Williams. You see Tony Barbie come and help him and then get back to his man. That's what Massachusetts is doing so well. Shot to Boyd. Shot clock inside at 10. Five. Sent away. Tony Barbie comes up with it. West Virginia says, hey, bring it in. We'll just slap it away. They've got a fistful of blocked shots. We're only halfway through the first half. There's Jerome Malloy baseline to Mike Williams. Williams bails himself out and a foul on the play. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow, top ranked boxing. Ten round lightweight. You got Zach Padilla against Ricky Myers. It'll be Barry Tompkins and Al Bernstein calling the action for you tomorrow here on ESPN. It's West Virginia 15-12 over UMass. UMass with the ball, 9.35 left first half. West Virginia back in that zone defense. They started the game in man-to-man, -man, but have been in zone recently. Malloy looks in trouble, shoots, can't get it. Harper Williams active. RB a free one for three. It will be UMass ball, and you heard somebody say, let it go. <laughs> and they got a break for UMass. Gail Catlett can't believe it. Gail's ball club, 10 and 6 overall, 3 and 3 in the Atlantic 10. Now he stepped on the, he stepped on the line. This is good aggressive defense by West Virginia. They're pushing the, the offense so far away from the basket that they actually step on the line. 21st year for that man, Gail Catlett. And a winner everywhere, Cincinnati and West Virginia. All right, let's see what happens on this defensive uh, trip for UMass. UMass has five blocks already. Roadcap with the rebound, knocked away. Loose ball, who comes up with it? Great Mike, hustle. Mike Boyd, good job. Boyd with a rare jumper, and he nails it. So West Virginia up by four, 16-12. Boyd is a fellow who, over the course of his career, has really improved his jump shot. Four points for Mike. There's Lou Rowe. It was Road Cap's hustle that created that play. Up and away and nice pass. pass. The forehand. Foul on number 55. That's Matt Road Cap. That's his first. And that is the third team foul on the Mountaineers. It's a game that's been relatively free of fouls, Dave, particularly considering how aggressive each team has played on the defensive end of the court. Chris Robinson, number 12, comes in for Mike Williams. Loser Flint, who's just the coach for UMass. Pretty demonstrative about what he'd like to see next time around. 
And you better do what you're supposed to do or else you gotta go over to the bench and talk to a guy named Bruiser. That's a great block by Wilson. Sure was. Mike Boyd to the hole. Nice job. Gets inside and scores. Quiets this crowd. 19-12 West Virginia. Six for Boyd. And UMass has been stuck on 12. Arthur Williams tries to change it. Loses it. RB bails him out. Started again. Chris Robinson running things at the point now. West Virginia back to the man-to-man. West Virginia on a 7-0 run. UMass trying to end that right here. You know, one thing about when you get these big games in the conference in February, everybody knows what the other guy's doing, and then some. Arthur Williams, no sense. Rebound to Green. Basie with the possession out for West Virginia. West Virginia certainly no stranger to victories up here in Massachusetts. Various Green with the bucket. He's averaging 14-7 a game. He's got four points, and West Virginia got a 21-12 lead. Restless crowd here at the Mullen Center. West Virginia, last two years, is one up here. That was at the cage. How many teams can say that? Nicely done, the anticipation. Well done by Green. He can't buy the call, though. 7-12 left first half. Gail Catlett pretty happy to, to be at the Mullen Center and up 21-12 over UMass. And Chris Robinson and Welcome back to the Mullen Center, everybody. Dave Sims, Dan Bonner with you as West Virginia is looking pretty good here, 21-12. Now, we we're talking about this being a state-of-the-art facility, and we thought that the poor Reverend Bob Price was the possession error. But as you can see, in a state-of-the-art facility, you don't have a possession error. Up on your scoreboard, you have the little letters P-O-S-S. -S. So West Virginia has the possession error. We just don't have an arrow. <laughs> they tricked me. That's right. Well, they weren't kidding when they said state of the art. <laughs> a little, you, a little you, too advanced for me. You had UMass SAD Howie Davis, one of the best. We scared him to death when we said there was no possession <laughs> arrow. He was going to send him over to the cage to get it. A rebound by Jerome Malloy. Feisty defense by West Virginia. Ooh, Basie tries to buy a foul. Doesn't get it. And here comes West Virginia. Mike Boyd. He's got Ricky Robinson. Nice save. Can't put it in. And Malloy with the rebound. It will remain UMass ball. UMass doing a great job on the offensive board, but they're not converting anything. And John Calipari knows that his squad's going to need more than 12 points to win this game. They just can't get off the 12. You bet. They've got six turnovers, leading to five West Virginia points, too. Kellogg with a rare shot. Can't get it. Tight rims here at the New Mullen Center. Harper Williams stepped out of bounds. Dave, there's nothing wrong with the effort that UMass has displayed here so far. They've been tremendous on defense. They've done a nice job on the offensive board. They can't get the ball to go in the basket. UMass comes in winners of seven straight. This ball knocked away by Kellogg. Blue roll, let's see. Green, a color jump ball. Aha, and we know that it's West Virginia's <laughs> ball. We're on top of this now. Sure enough. <laughs> there you see some scores from out of town at Miami. Ball Club is murder at home. Ask anybody in the Big East. The man, VCU, Barbie a big win in their Williams conference. To the Tony Barbee, Mike Williams, they come back Eric in from Kellogg, Kellogg and Dana and Dingle Dana for Dingle. UMass. John Calipari really needs to get some offense. Now, of course, West Virginia doing a tremendous job on the defensive end as well. Massachusetts has not had very many open jump shots. Everything's contested on both ends of the court. Five blocks for UMass. Boy, Robinson got no rhythm on that. Just threw it up. Nice rebound. That'll be a foul on UMass. Looks like Lou Rowe's going to pick up the foul. Pavarius Green doing a nice job getting inside. That's... And then foul at number 15, Lou Rowe. Lou That's Rowe's his foul. foul. That's his second. R.B. takes a seat. Dana Dingle back in for UMass. Various green with four points. Good size starting line for a front line for West Virginia. Wilson goes 6'10, Green 6'8, Ricky Robinson 6'8. West Virginia spreading it around. They've got uh, Basie with four points and Robinson with four points, Boyd with six points. West Virginia 10 0 run in the last 440, make it 11. So the Mountaineers. 
making it happen here at the Mullen Center, keeping this crowd out of the game. West Virginia's done a nice job switching defense from man to man back to this zone. Mike Williams running things at the point for UMass. With Lou Rowe. And Phil Wilson just parked inside for West Virginia. Excellent shot block. Bingle to the hole. He'll shoot two. Foul on number 45, Phil Wilson. His second. Can't give up the baseline. Wilson just doesn't get there quickly enough. Dingle, the freshman with the left hand, goes right by him. He gets the hand on his back and commits the foul. Whether you're playing zone or man to man, one of the cardinal sins, you can't give up that baseline as Botkin's going to come back in the game. Botkin back in, as well as Tracy Shelton. Tony Barbee will replace Lou Rowe for UMass. Dana Dingle. St. Raymond's High School in the Bronx, New York. He's a freshman, 6'6", 200 pounds. And he has been the biggest surprise recently for UMass. Recently against St. Bonaventure had 14 points and six rebounds. He's a young man that John Calipari has brought along very slowly. His confidence has developed as he's, as he's gone along. UMass at least got off the dozen there. They got one out of two, down 10. First UMass score since Dingle had a layup at the 12-30 mark. Bavarius Green, short. Here's Barbie with the rebound. Does it knock away? West Virginia ball. Mountaineers, Shelton for three. No, sir. Rebound, Rodka. Bot Botkin, rather, and he did travel. Jeremy Botkin, pretty active. Sporting that Mountaineer look right there. Let's remember, Botkin hasn't played in a couple of weeks, hasn't practiced in a couple of weeks. His timing certainly has to be off. Significant lead here by West Virginia. Tied for fourth in the Atlantic 10 with George Washington at three and three. They lead the first place Minutemen of UMass. Playing aggressively on the ball out on the perimeter in that zone. And Botkin, Robinson patrolling the inside. Malloy for three, got it. Jerome Malloy, second three of the game. He's got six points. Number 37 on the season for Jerome. Tops on the ball club. Botkin up strong and scores. And Malloy beats everybody down. Goes up and gets fouled. And he'll shoot a couple. Fouls against Botkin. West Virginia just a little slow getting back down the court. That bot that's Botkin's first personal foul. So look at John Calipari working as one of his co-captains, Harper He's Williams. He's upset with Harper Williams because they had a switch inside, and Williams didn't really react very well to Botkin, who got an easy basket. But I'll tell you what, on the screen, Williams got a forearm right in the nose from Ricky Robinson, and he, I think, was sort of stumbling across the lane. That'll stun you a little bit. Of course, John Calipari doesn't want to hear anything about that. Oh, Malloy misses the first. I remember Butch Bearder used to be with the Knicks. He's a coach at Howard University. He said, the big guys can't take a punch. <laughs> Got to be able to take a punch and get that rebound. Oh, Malloy. Yeah, the crowd is quite enthusiastic here at UMass. Alma mater of Julia Irving, Rick Pitino, among others. 25-17, West Virginia over the Minutemen. Boyd in trouble. Shelton bails him out, and they start over again. Notice how Boyd always wanting to get to the basket. That clock at 20. Well, you can see how the ankle is really bothering uh, Bike. Now, if you haven't played in a couple of weeks, and you're going to be sucking air very quickly. That's it. Get it inside to Green. He's played well. Turns, fires, saved inbounds. And here comes Malloy. They got numbers. Didn't make the pass till late. Whoa! The VLK on the play, but a foul too. So Harper Williams will shoot too. Harper Williams was coming down the court asking for the ball, but Malloy just simply, you can see Williams right in your screen now. Malloy waits too long, and as a result, he's got a contested shot. Here the defense comes to him. Green over the back is gonna pick up the foul, but with the pass earlier, I think it's a dunk. I always say the big guys run the court, you got to reward them, get it up to them. Tell you, if that man asks me for the ball, he can have it. Yes, sir. 62 percenter on the line. And boy, that hurts. Misses a deuce. That 
will be West Virginia ball. So the Mountaineers lead at 25-17 here at UMass. Kind of quiet crowd except for maybe that section. Some of Dan Bonner's personal friends, he gave them those front row seats here at the Mullins Center. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you as West Virginia looking good, vying for its first road win. Well, it's nice to see that the kids at UMass can put letters on something besides their heads, so they actually have a sign. All right, let's see what West Virginia does with this possession. Mountaineers lead it 25-17. So far, West Virginia has done a pretty good job in the paint. Ten points to seven. Here's Green. Another block. Parker Williams with yet another. He's got five of the seven blocks. Malloy to convert. Low cap with the rebound. Here comes West Virginia. Again, everything UMass is getting, a contested shot. Even that layup attempt was a contested shot. Just got to hang in there if you're UMass. Well, Barry shaking his head. He can't believe what's going on here. What a way to open up the new building. Shelton baseline. Nice block out. And Harper Williams took another shot that time. Took an uppercut Green. that time. That's right. And right now, let's get to our ESPN studios and Chris Fowler. Dave, it's a thriller at Maryland. Tied 66 all minute and a half to play. Doug Smith again wide open for the three. Got to defend him. Cavs up by three, fellas. We'll keep you posted. That is that is a big shot there. That's, a, that's a huge game for the University of Virginia, Dave. They've lost four out of their last five after their victory over Duke. That'll be a big win. Harper Williams at the line here. 3-0-3 left first half. West Virginia leading UMass 25-17. Harper knocks in his first free throw of the evening. Harper He's Williams only has three points, Dave. West Virginia's defense has done an excellent job. This is a guy who comes in averaging 17.4 points per game. That's another point. Doing a good job defensively. He's got five blocks. Crowd trying to get into the game. Here comes West Virginia, though. With the ball and up 25-19. Shelton to Basie. Basie's not been much of a factor since the early going. They've done a good job, West Virginia has in up front in the paint. In a double post-up situation. Bacon, road cap, baseline, foul on the play. Foul on Dana Dingle. Just pushed through right through Marsala's basic. Don't forget, every week on ESPN, boy, do we have basketball for you. Big Monday. Those conferences, the Big East, the Big Eight, the Big West. Super Tuesday, Big Ten in the SEC, and, of course, the Wednesday jam session, Big East and ACC. Catch it every week here on ESPN. UMass with only five team fouls. Shelton, three, rebound to Robinson. Basically, almost had a travel. Oh, up by Ricky Robinson beats the shot clock. Mountaineers get another bucket. 27 to 19. Six points for Robinson. Robinson got a piece of that ball. Harper Williams converts. What did he need that? Perfect example of strength on the inside. First by Robinson, then by Williams. Coming up on the two minute mark. West Virginia by six, 27-21. Boy, Robinson really laying the wood on people with those screens inside. Macy really, they're making him work, and they call the foul on Mike Williams. He can't believe it. First foul on Michael. Dave, I'm telling you, you get into February, and these teams know one another so well. They play one another at least twice every year. The coaching staff is all over the other coaching staff in terms of tendencies. These players are very, very well prepared. You just have to execute, and the defenses are making it tough to do that. Salas Basie, his fifth point. Now two for three at the foul line. Built like a running back, to say the least, out of Martinsburg, West Virginia. He's really a warrior. He's one of those guys that just comes there. He's just got the aggressiveness, and he's got the intensity of a coach. Gotta love that. Nice play by Botkin to knock it free. Robinson comes up with it. Botkin goes. Harper Williams is laboring up the court. He's taking a lot of shots. Harper 
See him in the paint is limping, and they call the timeout. The last thing UMass needed was to see their co-captain Harper Williams limp off. Don't forget coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. Munson shots Georgia Tech. Number nine, Iowa against Illinois, and of course, the hidden gem. Delta Fawcett Halftime Report coming up in a few. Harper Williams working on that left ankle. He was replaced by Lou Rowe. Lou number 15. West Virginia with time, Botkin. West Virginia up 29-21. Good game by Mike Williams. Good patience by West Virginia right now in command, although the shot clock gets under 10 points. Under 10 seconds, rather, and they throw the ball away. So UMass gets a life here. West Virginia running through their patterns on offense, but not really getting a good look at the basket. Excellent defense. Kellogg and Dingle in the backcourt for UMass. Lou Rowe posted, turn, scores. Put back by Dingle, no good. Lou Rowe, no, sir. And let's see, it will be UMass ball out on Marsalis Basin. A lot, of body, a lot of body banging going on tonight. Hard to look sharp on the offensive end if the ball isn't going in the basket. Again, UMass having a lot of opportunities but not being able to convert. Home team's got to get used to these rims, too. First game in the Mullen Center for Actually, UMass. UMass has only practiced on this floor one more time than West Virginia. There you go. 29-21. It's about 10 seconds difference between shot clock and game clock. That's going to be a foul on Botkin. Blue row much too quick for Botkin. Second foul on Jeremy Botkin. Uh, upper track to West Virginia. You know, when Gail Catlett showed up here tonight, his dress was immaculate. Yeah, he looks a little ruffled over there. The tie's loose. Really working. Hey, the jacket's still on. I know the jacket's still on, but the tie's not where it was. Mike Boyd comes in for West Virginia, number 31. Here's Lou Rowe. While Harper Williams was out of the lineup, Lou had to play in the middle and was not real comfortable with his back to the basket. 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Marsalis Basie getting instructions from Gail Catlin. Eight-point lead for the Mountaineers. Down to 20. Kellogg's got to be careful. There's the pick. See the quickness edge. Basie, baseline, no, sir. Lou Rowe, look at oh Basie steals it. They got a chance. They got they time. Got RB, no, he short armed it. Tip, no good. And Robinson comes up with it. They might have a chance if he throws it. Let's see. No, sir. That's it wouldn't have been half, any good. Oh, you ought to get something to hit the shot clock and drop down behind the backboard. We're at halftime here at the Mullen Center, and West Virginia enjoys a 29-21 lead. Let's get to Chris Fowler at our ESPN studios. Maryland falls to 2-7 and seven in the conference. Well, we saw in the first half of our ball game a long drought. UMass stuck at 12. This didn't shoot well in the first half. They were uncomfortable, I thought, at mm -hmm. home, which is unusual, except as Dan Bonner noted, they've only played or practiced once there. Uh, this is a situation where Gail Catlett is unheard of. A lot of people aren't mm -hmm. positive about this. Man. He just wins. They're very quick. They're aggressive defensively. They challenge all the shots. They're not an easy out. Even though it is an emotional game for UMass, it may have hurt them just a little bit. Well, Cal Perry was an unknown a couple of years ago. Not now. And they'll have some things to say He's in the locker room. like you now. That's We're going to come back with some highlights. Iowa and Illinois involved in another thriller that's going down in the final minutes. We'll check in there and also highlights from around the ACC when we continue in the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors, and by Aetna, a policy to do more. This halftime report is presented by the Delta Faucet Company. Delta, the way water is brought to life. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by McDonald's. What you want is what you get, guaranteed, at McDonald's today. What a wacky ending. Close to an ending here. 
We're at halftime. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. West Virginia and UMass. Some February familiarity, Dan, here in the Atlantic 10, and that is reflected in a poor shooting by both clubs. I'm telling you what, Massachusetts only shoots 26% in the first half, as you can see here. West Virginia shoots 33. The word brutal applies right there, but it's brutal defensively. These teams really got after one another. You can see Massachusetts with seven blocked shots. Nothing coming easy for either team. Indeed, and those are some of the numbers from the first half. The shooting, as we mentioned, not real good. And here's a key play for UMass Harper Williams with an injury. Right there at the top left of your screen, Harper Williams trying to stop. Looks like he turned his ankle. He, however, is on the court to start the second half. And there he is, and another significant number for UMass. Lou Rowe has not scored the first half. He averages 14-7. And there he is right there at the top of the key, number 15. He is the second leading scorer on this team. And behind Harper Williams, here's Kellogg to Malloy. RB and inside to Harper Williams. A foul on West Virginia's Phil Wilson, his third. UMass comes out of the locker room, spreading a little bit on the perimeter. Harper Williams able to operate alone inside. If that's where they decided to go, that's not a bad idea. Get the ball to your big horse inside. Barbie very quiet in the first half as well. Indeed. John Calipari always insisting that Tony let the game come to you. Don't you go find it. Good things will happen. You may need him to step up here though. West Virginia leading 29-21. West Virginia playing that 2-3 matchup zone. Get it inside. Harper Williams gets the roll. Harper Williams, he's got eight. Demarius Green, Marcellus Basie, Ricky Robinson down low. Has it blocked? Another block by Harper Williams. UMass ball. Barb B gets away. No, he doesn't. They're going to get him. For the travel right now, Chris Fowler at the ESPN Studios. Dave, check out the finish here. Illinois down to 1.5 to go. T.J. Wheeler to inbound the ball. He's got to come in quick. Comes into Kaufman. He might get a shot. It's up. It's up. It counted. Illinois wins it 78-77. This time, the I a miracle of belongs to Illinois. Back to Dave and Dan. We should be so lucky to have that kind of finish here at Amherst. That was a beauty for Illinois. And now West Virginia leading UMass 29-23. Early second half. West Virginia 0-5 on the road this year. UMass number one in the Atlantic 10. Ricky Robinson rolls one home. You simply cannot let Robinson get position inside. If he's going to play on down on the block, you've got to get in front of him. Once he catches the ball, he's very hard to stop in there. Tony Barbee. Oh, oh sir. Rebound, and we'll go to the other end of the floor. And it looks like they got Lou Rowe pushing. He just has been in trouble all night long. That's three fouls on Lou Rowe. Here's the wide open jump shot by Barbie. He just hasn't been able to get it to go down tonight. Rowe, known as a rebounder, gets called for the foul, pushing off. I didn't really see any West Virginia guys around. That must be because he pushed them out of the way. <laughs> Lou Rowe with a scoreless first half. Here's Basie. Mountaineers. Exercise some patience here, leading 31-23. Good battle underneath to see Barbie and Green. Green with the jumper. Mosa rebound. Robinson saves it, but to Kellogg in UMass. And Robinson still in the stand. Whoa, oh, what a play. play! That's a great play by Marsalis Basie, but UMass comes up with it. Basie. And Basie's still after the ball in there. He very nearly got it again. Oh, Malloy brings a three. 31 26. That's 10 points for Jerome Malloy. His third three of the night. There's the defense. Lou Rowe forces the turnover. Harper Williams. Lou Rowe sent back. And 
John Calipari going <laughs> crazy on the sideline. His assistant's trying to shield him from the officials. That's great defense by Rowe. Now watch, however, look at Botkin getting back on defense. This is a guy who hasn't played in a couple of weeks, gets in position. He takes him low. Boyd takes him high. The ball slapped out of bounds. Great hustle. Good hustle again by Green and Basie. You know, you're right about John Calipari. He got that technical early. He's had to be on his best behavior, but he was trying to get the Dick Fick award over there. Bill Bano and those are front were holding him back, trying to shield him. <laughs> In the old days, some of the coaches had seat belts. That's right. John picked up his technical foul at the 17.06 mark, first half. Lou Rowe having a difficult night trying to get on the board. Another foul against P.G. Green. Good ball movement by the University of Massachusetts. Rowe got a loose underneath the zone. Green hit him going up. And you know, Dave, as much as Massachusetts has struggled on the offensive end, West Virginia had a 23 to 12 lead. They led by 11 points about midway through the first half. And even though they've maintained the lead, UMass gradually cutting into it. They have it down to five. They can cut it to three. There you have it right there. 16-35, Lou Rowe on the line. Both teams are sort of in the same boat. They've played well defensively. They just can't get any rhythm going on the offensive end. Dana Dingle will come in. He'll send Lou Rowe to the bench. That man, young man has played some valuable minutes in this basketball game. Lou Rowe goes to the bench after getting his first two. Crowd of 9,493 here at the New Mullen Center. Winding up right now, trying to get the Minutemen back into the game. Looks like Rowe Cap got away with a walk, and they certainly did. Basie stepped back and fires and scores. Basie's really had a fine game. RB attacks glass. He'll shoot two. Just like Road Cap is going to get the foul. Last two times down the court, West Virginia has West given Virginia away easy opportunities inside. Just Road nobody Cap. stops Barbie until he's too far to the basket. Road Cap gets the foul the because he doesn't maintain his position. He drops his arms across Barbie. Back in the lineup, he's replacing for various Reed or the minute Mike Williams, Mike Williams coming back in for UMass. He's replacing Jerome Malone. UMass hasn't really shot the ball much better here in the second half, but they've done a much better job getting to the free throw line and converting. RB at the line, 73 percenter this season. Another big point as UMass continues to chip away at the West Virginia lead. John Calipari's team was only 44 percent from the free throw line in the first half, but they came into this game over 70 percent as, as a team and leading the Atlantic 10. Slowly but surely, the lead has closed. It's three points now for the Mountaineers. Dave Robinson, Tracy Shelton, guarded by Mike Williams, beats the pick. And Mike Williams will be called for the foul on the block. Second foul on Mike. First team foul. It's a nice job by Shelton. To get the ball into scoring position. 1548 left. We got a ball game. It's 33-30. West Virginia leading UMass. Thank you so much, Chris. And it's amazing how you can get off, still get off a shot. That hand still got it out there, flicked it out there, and Illinois comes up with the win. West Virginia's lead down to three points now. It's 33-30 over Massachusetts. And the crowd is just dying for a sustained frenzy. The minute men can get something going. And maybe that's the start. Kellogg with the rebound. RB, boy, he wanted that. Harper Williams has it knocked out of bounds. Once again, Marsalis Basie doing a great job stepping off his man Kellogg and slapping at the ball when it goes inside to Harper Williams. Zone defense again for West Virginia. RB air ball and Ricky Robinson comes up with it. Four on two break. Shelton in trouble. Bailed out. Here's Basie. Robinson's got Harper Williams pinned. 
Nice job by Barbie. That's an excellent double team down there. And sure enough, causes the turnover. Good job. Here comes West Virginia. Three-pointer will send this place crazy. Nice steal by Shelton. West Virginia convert. Here's Robinson. He'll save it. No. Yes, he does. And then he lost it again. 33-30 West Virginia, the closest this ball game's been since 15-12. That at the 12-minute mark in the first half. One of the things that impresses me about this basketball game, Dave, apart from the tremendous intensity that we've seen from both teams, neither team is letting down at all defensively. The offense hasn't gone very well, but each team continues to sustain its defensive pressure. RB brings UMass to within one. Tony Barbie's got seven. For various green back in a hurry. Double bounce. Harper Williams with the rebound. UMass for the lead. Oh, they wanted Dingle to shoot it. Harper Williams. And he's caught for the charge. Botkin established this position down low. Second foul on Harper Williams. That's a tremendous effort by Bodkin. He gets down there. Williams sticks that arm around. That's what the foul is called on because he stuck that arm around, hooked him. Second foul on Harper Williams. Debris on the court. I've got somebody throwing some ice down on the court. Not a wise move. Well, matter of fact, there's a lot. There's a couple I see that they don't see right in front of our team. See what happens here, UMass. Got to defend now. They're down a point. Road cap. Good defense by UMass. Shelton. Here comes that UMass crowd. First game at the Mullen Center. Dingle almost with the steal. Green, nice. Tough down the throat. Cap, he gets the roll. Boy, look at a collision underneath. And Botkin and just hurt that ankle again. I think that's the same ankle. Without a doubt, it's the left ankle coming off the stress fracture. And he fell on Lou Rowe and came down badly on the ankle. He can't buy a break. What a tough one for Jeremy Botkin. That is a tough play. Dingle goes for the steal, the pass to Road Cap. Lou Rowe trying to take the charge as the ball bounces in the basket. Botkin comes right down on top of Lou Rowe. Here's another look. This is a great pass by Green. As Rowe goes down, Botkin concentrating on the basketball, gets his leg knocked out from under him. And he had a fracture, stress fracture in that left ankle. And it's his left leg that's bothering him. You can oh, see the brother. frustration on his face. He banged the floor a couple of times. And frustration and pain. Still more football, the season finale. The Pro Bowl, the AFC NFC Pro Bowl coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, 8 p.m. Sunday here on ESPN, and they have all the big names, Keith Jackson, Thurman Thomas, Jay Novacek, Steve Young, amongst others. So make sure you check that out Sunday night. And there's Botkin being helped off the court. Oh, my, what a terrible break for that young man. And he had been playing very well tonight. Just got a foul, drew an offensive foul on Harper Williams, the last just, trip down. Just took that walking, that boot cast, if you will, just took that off two days ago. Oh, brother. All right, UMass looking at a deficit of 35-32. UMass outscoring West Virginia 11-6 thus far in this half. West Virginia had a 23-12 lead at one point, but UMass has slowly but surely chipped away after both teams shot poorly in the first half. And whoa, have to break those two apart. Now, what's Gail Catlett? Gail Catlett is at half court. And Gail Catlett's on the other side of half court. Because I think he wants a call on Harper Williams because Harper threw an elbow. John Calipari saying, hey, isn't he out of the coach's box? And John knows something about that from the <laughs> NCAAs <laughs> last year. That's right. I'm telling you, Gail Catlett did uh, about a 14-inch vertical jump over there, which is pretty good for a basketball coach. 
He would have loved to see Harper Williams and pick he, up another foul. He was on the other side of half court. He was almost in John Calipari's coaching box. Boyd inside, no. Mike Boyd had to penetrate Harper Williams. Got eight points and two fouls, and Gail Catlett would have loved to see number three. Bart B and Malloy come in for UMass. There he plays Dingle and Kellogg. Marcellus Basie has been on the bench for a relatively long time. He's sort of the guy that's been making things go for West Virginia. Three-point West Virginia lead. Mountaineers with the ball. Shelton into the lane. Lefty, no. Rebound, Barbie. Does a good job to get out of trouble. A three ties it. Blue row, baseline, got it. Blue row with four points. With scoreless first half. Shelton pops out, drills two. That was a big basket. That was a big basket. You could just feel the crowd coming into the ball game and that quiet. Mike Williams right down the lane out on West Virginia. Boy, that defense opened up, and Williams read it nicely. Mike Boyd with a great recovery, though, slapping the ball away. Here comes Marsalis, basically, and Phil Wilson. Number 45, Phil Wilson. Matt Roadcap and Mike Boyd. They're replacing With Basie, and uh, they can push the tempo just a little bit more. There's woof, Basie with a terrific effort. Williams! Ricky Robinson with the foul. And you talk about getting one right in the old face. Basie goes after the steal, and there's nobody to help out inside against Harper Williams, and he just powers it to the basket. Harper no Williams. little dink shot right here. He's just going to power it to the goal. My house, my goal. Oh. Harper Williams with 10 points. And a conference at midcourt, Jimmy Burr and the coaches, Calipari and Catlett. I'm not sure what all that is about. Throwing stuff on the uh, oh, okay. floor. Here we Hold go. Hold on for a second. Somebody's throwing ice, ice on the floor. The next, next time it's done, it's a technical. This is a close game. game. Don't, Don't do it. it. Again, Again, we, we got, got the classiest, classiest fans, fans in America. In America. Don't, Don't do it. it. <laughs> Depends on your definition of class. But maybe uh, John Calipari's uh, imploring to the fans to keep the ice off the floor and in the cups. Well, he makes an excellent point. It's a close game. I think that's what Gail Catlett wants, is he wants a technical foul called on the fans. The game is now tied. First tie since 12 12, the 12 30 mark, first half. Got a ball game. Lacking excitement, first game here at the Mullen Center. Various Green, in and out. Harper Williams at the rebound. UMass for the lead. Mike Williams, runner, no sir. And Basie will beat Barbie. Can he convert? Oh, no, sir. oh brother, what a block! Oh. Harper Williams with yet another block. Williams Seven did, on the night. He did a great job running the court, but it was Malloy that made Basie change the shot and gave Williams a chance to get there. Mike Williams buys a foul. Ricky Robinson, his third. This is a BLK, capital letters right here. That's Barbie. It's not Malloy, but notice Barbie forces Basie to change to the scoop shot, and that gives Harper Williams time to recover. And watches Barbie right there. Comes off with the right hand. That's the hand he broke. He's still got that wrap on that hand, but slaps it right off the board and gets the fast break started. Shooting two. Robinson now with three personal fouls. That was some sequence. Williams rolls it home. UMass with the lead, 38-37. Three points for Mike Williams and Harper Williams to take a well-deserved rest. Boy, he stepped it up in the second half. First lead for UMass since 5-4, the 16-30 mark. 
UMass by two. We got a beauty here. First game at the Mullen Center. It's UMass regaining the lead up by two. Welcome back, everybody, to the Mullen Center here in Amherst, Massachusetts. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. And this has turned out to be an outstanding game. The number one and four teams in the A-10. And yes, UMass has produced a few doctors, Dan, during the course of its great history. <laughs> None more famous than Dr. J. Number 32, Julius Winfield Irving. There he is in the middle of the lane scoring two of his many points. And the game, how about the game Harper Williams is having? A game he, Dr. J would be proud of. You bet with Harper Williams has uh, the school record, has tied the school record for, for block shots. Get to that in a second. Here's Lou Rowe. Fallen basic. Sure was. And Jerome Malloy was out in front of the pack, and Rue was trying to get it. Rowe was trying to get it up court as quickly as possible. First foul on Marsalis Basin. Coming out of that timeout, Gail Catlett instructed his troops to go inside to Ricky Robinson. Robinson, a powerful inside player, but once again, the UMass defense was equal to the task. Tremendous job with the steal. Shelton comes back in, replacing Marsalis Basie. Not really got you. Know, he had a good start in the game. Things have slowed up for him for the greater part of, uh, I'd say, what, the last 15 minutes. He hasn't really uh, generated a lot of offense for West Virginia. He was sort of able to move more fluidly in an open court transition situation early in the basketball game, but as UMass has turned this into more and more of a half court grinder, the advantage has switched over to them. You want to get a look at a shooter's face, we'll get you a close up of Jerome Malloy, number 24, for UMass. When he comes free, his face is just crying for the ball. <laughs> Open, I'm open, I'm open. As a matter of fact, Harper intercepted that pass intended for Jerome Malloy and rebound to Green. You're absolutely right. Malloy was all alone over there. Good entry pass. Robinson has to double pump and scores. Nicely done. And he turned to the right that time. Usually he likes to go to the left. That was a good move. Ten points for Ricky. Stepped on the line. Malloy stepped on the line. Second time we've seen that. How about uh, the fact that, you know, first time in the building, not totally familiar with the feel and everything of the building of the floor, maybe? Dave, the court's the same size. I know, but sometimes, <laughs> I'll give you that. It's 94 94 What do you think? They got more space here? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes the lines. You know, yeah, sometimes okay. you come and there's a different feel that you'll have. You know, you were a shooter. You knew your spots on the floor. Yeah, if I knew my spot, it was over there about where Botkin sit. Knocked out of bounds by Harper Williams. Harper with seven blocks tonight. Nine is the school record for UMass, and he owns it. Did it against Rhode Island February 1st of 91. Mike Coy to Shelt. Boy, he rushed that in a hurry. And then he got a three. That was a great job getting that ball off quickly. Good, good ball movement by West Virginia that particular occasion. Eight points for Shelton. West Virginia leads it 42-39. RB. That's a three. No. Can it get any closer than that? Down and out. Boy, off contact. Foul. We'll walk the floor. Boyd trying to force something that just wasn't there. He's got Kellogg coming right behind and just trying to force something that wasn't there. Williams does a nice job stepping in. Three guys around him. This is a game where every time somebody has tried to force something, it's come back in their face. There's been a turnover, a blocked shot. You really have to be patient, both on the offensive and defensive end. Seventh foul on West Virginia. UMass only with three team fouls. UMass looking at one and one action coming up. Basie back in the game, Boyd out. RB in close, and Roadcap sent him to the line. Good hard foul inside. That Roadcap, his third foul. And Dave, once again, we see UMass with an opening, but another perfect example of the fact that nothing has come easy for either one of these teams. Nobody's getting any wide open opportunities. Everything is contested, and on that occasion, contested very hard. 
RB holds at seven points in the game. Averaging 14-1, shooting 73% from the line. Tony's done a good job reducing his uh, turnovers over the last few weeks. Consistent turnover ratio, much more favorable to his coach, John Calipari. 42-40, West Virginia. West Virginia trying to create a two-man game with Robinson and Basie on that side. Look at Robinson asking for the ball. He's got Shelton over on that side. Great defensive job by Harper Williams. Robinson really wants the basketball inside. Ricky Robinson, number 21. That's a great battle, and they are letting them play. Robinson and Harper Williams. Both of these guys give an honest effort. Boy, they just come out and hammer you. Oh, that's a great job by Kellogg to get over that screen. There's Robinson. Harper Williams. Let's, Let's see what dive. we got. Who's the call on? It's on Harper Williams. His third. Boy, you could see a call, a foul call coming against one of those guys. They just battled and battled and battled. Williams with the elbow there. Here, Robinson spins him around. Now, Williams trying to come over. Yes, he did foul him on that particular occasion, but that is a big-time battle down on the inside. For you relatively old-timers, may bring back memories of Dave DeBusher and the late Gus Johnson battling in <laughs> Nick and Bullet battles years ago, late 60s. Well, you're showing your age. Tell me about it, but, I, but that's what it reminded me. If you look at these guys, I want the space. No, I want it. Nice job by Green. West Virginia by 242-40 at 8.40 left in the ballgame. West Virginia had a nine-point lead. And the race. Chris Green gets the roll. Various Green started out quickly. Hasn't really made his presence felt a lot lately. Dave, we've talked about the defensive effort for both of these teams, but these teams continue to get to their offensive patterns. West Virginia, just good, tough cuts, a tough drive to the basket, but it was their patience running their offense and running the offense hard that created that opening for Pavaria Green. Line viola oh. lane violation, boy, that hurts. You need every point you can get in a game like this, and Robinson stepped in before Pavarius Green released the basketball. All right, when you start taking points off the board, those are killers. 44-40, West Virginia. West Virginia team, a little bit of character, I think, Dave. UMass came all the way back and went ahead by four, but the Mountaineers didn't wilt. They've come back, and now they lead by four. And a good job, and Malloy throws it away. West Virginia, with Basie back into the game, number 15, chance to add on to its lead. See the Musketeers over the Explorers there. Mike Williams back for Jerome Malloy. UMass has 15 turnovers, West Virginia eight. You know, Malloy hasn't been able to get loose for that three-point shot in this second half. And good defense. That's a tough pass. Oh, what a catch inside. Nice job by Ricky Robinson. He'll shoot a couple. Third foul on Kellogg. I thought that was an interception for sure as they threw the lob. Somehow Robinson came down with the ball. Watch this. The ball goes into Robinson right there. Lou Rowe just a little late, and you're certainly not going to stop Ricky Robinson that close to the basket. Kellogg is lucky he didn't get killed. Dana Dingle, number three, comes in for UMass, replacing Harper Williams. Ricky Robinson at the line. He's got 10 points and seven rebounds. He strokes that one in. Ricky is 6'8", 245-pound junior out of Roselle, New Jersey. There have been some questions about this young man this year about how well he has competed. There's no question about his talent, but sometimes doesn't really play that hard. No question about his competition tonight. He's gone out there and played hard right from the opening tap. And the other upside to that, he's played well on the road. Struggled on the road. Mike Williams in a hurry. No. Rebound. Dingle. Got it. Dingle. UMass hanging tough, down four, 46-42. Here comes the crowd. Never has a crowd wanted to be in a game more than this one. First game at the Mullen Center. That's a foul on Robinson that time. They're fronting Robinson. He pushed off, and that's number four. West Virginia's got that big horse in there. They want to ride it, but that time he pushed off with his right arm as he was going after the basketball. You know, Catlin making no move to get Robinson out of the game. If you're UMass, you got to go at uh, Robinson next time down. 
They'll shoot one and one. Again, trying to get the ball inside to Robinson to pass the corner. Lou Rowe there, you can see him holding off right there, the push. And big guys have a tendency to do that. You can hold the guy off with the arm, and nothing is harder than gliding to the basket. You have a tendency to throw that arm out there, and that's what Robinson did. I'm going to give him the 45 degree, the 90 degree angle, but when he stretched it out, that's when they whistled the foul. Lou Rowe. You know, Dave, and I think UMass, they may want to try to attack Robinson, but when a guy is as experienced as Robinson, it's not as hard to protect yourself on the defensive end. You can just get out of the way. It's on the offensive end where he's got to worry about getting that fifth foul. Six points for Lou Rowe. He cuts back into the West Virginia lead. It's West Virginia by two. 46. Welcome back, everybody, to the Mullen Center. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. And uh, we can tell you that coming up on ESPN, hockey for you as Gordy Howe, I, Al Iafredi, will be part of the big skills weekend. Heroes of hockey, Gordy Howe, you'll see him, and Al Iafredi, possessor of the league's uh, NHL's best and uh, most powerful shot. He's been clocked at over 100 miles per hour. That's like 101.4. That ain't think. too shabby. That's getting it up there. Make sure you check out all the action here on ESPN. Back to our action here. We got a beauty. West Virginia by just a mere bucket over UMass. Foul on, Foul on Kellogg. They call him for the block. A very unpopular decision here at the Mullen Center. Marcellus Basie gets up limping. You almost have to call him for the block because he knocked two West Virginia guys down. West Virginia not really handling this press. Basie gets out of there. Boom. <laughs> he never really got it. You have to, to draw the charge. You have to have your feet set. You've got to be both feet on the floor facing the dribbler. And he never got in that position. Bad news for UMass is fourth foul for Derek Kellogg, Jerome Malloy comes back, as does Harper Williams. Now the scoreboard says that there's only six fouls on UMass, but it must be seven, because Basie's going to the line to shoot one and one. Basie's got eight points. He's three of four at the line tonight. Adds yet another. West Virginia comes into tonight's game averaging 80.2 points per ball game. Doubtful that they'll get it tonight. Rebound to Harper Williams. UMass averaging 74.8 points per ball game. Good, tough defensive battle. Couple of teams that know each other quite well. West Virginia leads the series 26 to 8. They won their last two trips up here to Amherst. Not many people can say that. West Virginia back in that zone that has been pretty effective because it's been very active. Mike Williams running the point. Dana Dingle with Malloy, Barbie, and Harper Williams for UMass. Shot. Robinson out of the game for West Virginia, Dave. Shot clock inside of 10, as you can see. Mike Williams, NBA 3, bangs it off. Barbie, loose ball, it's out of bounds. Roadcap had the basketball and it was out of bounds. UMass maintains possession. Lou Rowe will come back into the game shortly. Calipari angry at Barbie and pulls him right now for Lou Rowe. Well, this is a game that has been characterized by superior effort by everybody just about all the time, and I think he was angry at Barbie because he got out hustled for that ball. A couple of substitutions coming in. Ricky Robinson back in for West Virginia, and Tracy Shelton, number three. 640 left in the basketball game. Robinson with four personal fouls. But he gives them an offensive threat inside that even if he's not scoring, he's a threat in there. I think they need to have him on the court. Lou Rowe running baseline number 15. He's limping just a little bit. Everybody's going to have bruises and scars after this one. Fire up the hot tub tonight. <laughs> Jerome Malloy. Oh, way long. Rebound. Come down. Let's see. And we'll walk the floor. Malloy's going to get the, the foul. Wilson up for the rebound. Malloy comes flying into him. Boy, Malloy struggling big time with his shot tonight. Never really got a rhythm. And he it's hasn't fair. had that many opportunities. Shooters like to have open shots. And there just haven't been any open shots tonight. That time, Malloy, by the time he didn't shoot the ball very quickly, Dave. Took him a while to get it loaded up. And by the time he did, road cap was there. Phil Wilson at the line, 38% of the season. Well, <laughs> this is the way the game's gone. The guys who are supposed to be able to shoot the ball can't throw it in the ocean. 
And the guys you don't expect it from, they're making everything, kissing every part of the rim, too. <laughs> That's a big rim up there. Barry Green back in for West Virginia. And a good takedown by Harper Williams. Look at Basin. What? Basin's got to be careful. He's right at elbow level there, Harper Williams. Unintentional elbow level at that. Don't even have to be malicious if you're Harper Williams. Bad pass, entry pass. Man to man defense. Macy with a good overplay. Dana Dingle to Mike Williams. West Virginia's really playing off Dingle. Barely guarding him at all. Mike Boyd. On the perimeter. Wide open shot, Dingle, the lefty. No, oh, sir. There's Basie stripping the ball away. There's a block. Green blocked it. And they break that up position. Yeah, the ball. It is indeed the Minutemen's ball. The Reverend over there pointing it out. But that's the true possession arrow right there. There you go. <laughs> State of the art here at the Mullen Center. He's replacing number three, Dana Dingle. The intensity of this game is remarkable. From start to finish, there just hasn't been any let up. The thing you gotta like if you're a textbook guy, here's Barbie. Inside, no sir. Rebound, look at this, look at this. Harper Williams goes up, has it sent back. And West Virginia comes up with the ball. Mike Boyd, cross court to Green, hello. For various Green's got 10. And the UMass bench is irate. Calipari already has one. He may be working on another. UMass by six. West Virginia by six. 45, Phil Wilson gets an assist from Rowe. There he's got his hand on Rowe's back. Now watch this as Harper Williams goes to the floor. Matt Roadcap right down on the back of his head, banging his teeth on the court. As Williams goes down, boy, this is scrapping for the basketball. Here goes boom. Get out the old dentures right I'm there, boy. I'm telling you. Oh, my. 1-800, where are they? <laughs> Oh, boy. You should have seen the UMass bench. Could have teed up just about anybody in a suit on the UMass bench after that call. Well, everybody in there had, was grabbing somebody by the shirt. Wilson had Rowe by the shirt, and Rowe had Green by the shirt, and everybody fell down in a heap. Both teams in a bonus situation. Six-point lead for West Virginia. 4.50 left in the ballgame. Mike Williams, it. they need that. You know, West Virginia's done a pretty good job laying off the guys who don't really shoot it well from the outside, but Pavarius Green got too far away from Mike Williams. Mike Williams, a streaky shooter, can heat it up quickly. He's now for a touch foul. Physical game, a lot's been allowed, and then the foul outside, that's the kind of call it and drive you nuts sometimes, but you got to call him. A lot, a lot may have been allowed, Dave. I agree with you, but it's all that stuff down inside where it's hard to see. You take, you stick your left hand out and grab some guy by the shirt right in front of the referee. <laughs> you gotta call it. Sir, in front of God and everybody out there. It's hard to miss that one. Third foul on Mike Williams. Marsalis Basie, four for six at the free throw line. And I think Harper Williams may be bleeding. And what he's asking for, I think, is a Band-Aid or something. I think he's bleeding from the leg, down just below the knee. Now, indeed there, he is. right there. OK, he's bleeding. So he's got to come out of the basketball game. Now, they either have to get a substitute in there, or if he wants to come back in, once they stop the bleeding, and he can't come back until the bleeding stops. But once they stop the bleeding, they have the option of putting him back in and taking a timeout. But now Dingle's going to come in the game. Now, the rule here is once he's attended by medical personnel, he can come back in the game. But right now, he's a substitute. And so therefore, at least one tick has to run off the clock. Now, the medical personnel, they determine when it's time for him to come back in the game, when he's ready to come back in the game. But the officials are not allowed to let him back in if he's still bleeding. You bet. So they're going to get it wrapped up there, and then he'll be ready to come back in the game. But some time has to run off the clock here. Marcellus Basie at the line. Both teams in the bonus situation. Marcellus now five for seven. In fact, on the next foul, Dave, each team will be shooting two. Both at nine fouls. 
AC good and he extends West Virginia to a 52 47 lead. And Harper Williams up and back at the scorers table. Dana Dingle. Mike Williams. Williams just hit a big three for UMass. That's a tough matchup for PG Green. He's worried about Williams beating him to the basket, but he's also got to cover up that three point shot. And if he does do his job covering, that's a lot to shoot over for Mike Williams. Lou Rowe turned away. Ooh, he had a free one. Reloaded. No, sir. Let's see. Loose ball. And a foul on the play. Foul on Wilson as Jerome Malloy got the rebound, and Mike Boyd found himself up and almost in the first row. West Virginia ball there, 45. There's PG Green. He gets out there, and he forced that reload by Williams. Then Roadcap isn't able to control, and Malloy sneaks in there for the basketball. Everybody continues to go after the board, after the board. There's Harper Williams back in the basketball game. He's got that wrap on his leg. Mickey Robinson comes back in, too. And Tracy Shelton. Joining him, Tracy Shelton, number three. 4.05 left in the basketball game. Welcome to the Atlantic 10, folks. And the Atlantic 10 having a good season. Tell you about that in a second. Jerome Malloy can't get number 11, but coming into tonight's game, the Atlantic 10's non-conference record, 64 and 24, six best in the country. 52-48. The Atlantic 10 is a great league, Dave. No question about it. Especially when you look at a St. Joe's that has come out of nowhere to run a 4-2 record in the conference. This West Virginia team picked by the coaches as the conference favorite. The Mountaineers at three and three, tied for fourth place with George Washington. The home crowd looking for a defensive stop right here. 14, 13 seconds now left on the shot clock. Got to get something going. They're down to nine. There's the shot clock. Look for, might look for Basie. Shelton. Comes off the screen. Free rebound. Galuro Malloy. Can't get the roll. Harper Williams has it knocked out of his hands. It will remain UMass ball. Harper Williams close to a triple double. He's got 11 rebounds, 11 points, and seven blocks. Well, he hustled down the court that time. He made that play by getting down the court. Galuro. Tracy Shelton. Two point ball game. Good luck by Harper Williams. Just got the ball inside. Rowe cutting to the basket. Not good inside defense right there. Wilson turned his head. You got to watch that guy in the middle of the court. Just not a very good defensive job that time by Wilson in West Virginia. Saw the open space and took it. Phil Wilson takes a seat. Matt Road cap number 55 is for West Virginia. Harper Williams again saves it. Ooh, boy, Lou Rowe got away with one there. Tracy Shelton comes up with the ball. Three minutes, two-point game. Harper Williams limping up the court again. Oh, cap, hit Robinson, he'll shoot two. And Harper Williams just took so long to get up the court after making that save. He went flying into the stands. He limped up the basketball court. And as a result, nobody was down there to guard Robinson. He was able to get to the basket for the offensive rebound. Four fouls on Harper Williams, who's bringing every ounce of energy out of his body tonight. 257 left, 12 points right now for Ricky Robinson. Tenth leading scorer in the Atlantic 10, 14.1 points per ball game. as always at this stage in the game. Short, it was. Oh, Roadcap very nearly tipped that in over Rowe. A three ties it for UMass. Lou Rowe goes up strong and scores. Lou Rowe with a chance to tie the ball game. 
Dave, one of the biggest concerns for the West Virginia Mountaineers was the offensive rebounding of UMass. Right there, you can see Lou Rowe with the perfect position. Nobody anywhere around the last few possessions. UMass doing a great job on the offensive board. Textbook rebound. Up strong, two hands. Don't put it on the floor. Put it off the glass and in. 13 points for Lou Rowe. Check that. Robinson with 13 points and six rebounds, and he has fouled out. Ricky Robinson, he's done for the evening. That's a huge foul right there as Robinson gets the foul. Great second half for Lou Rowe. Scoreless in the first half. And he's got 10 points right now. Can't tie it. Let's see. Parker Williams. Loose ball. UMass has got it. Williams for three. Tip. No. Oh, and Marcellus Basie comes up with it. Little guy on the floor gets the ball, Dave. UMass is all over the offensive board, and with Ricky Robinson out of the game, West Virginia's going to be hard pressed to keep them off the offensive board, and now they lose the inside scoring threat. Remember, Botkin went out of the game early with an injury, so West Virginia a little thin along the front line right at the moment. You bet. Gail Catlett going to talk things over here at the Mullins Center. First game in the Mullins Center, and the Mullins Maniacs. Here in the crowd for UMass, trying to get their team going. They're down by one. Yeah. Having a hot time in cold western Massachusetts this evening. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you in Atlantic 10 contest. It has been a beauty. If you're looking for finesse basketball, you got the wrong game. If you're looking for rough and tumble, I'm bringing it to you. Kind of basketball, this is it. Here's your reset, the timeout story. Both teams in pretty good shape. Team fouls. Both teams shooting two, and West Virginia will get the next possession off of a held ball. So we'll see what happens. Be interesting to see if West Virginia, they've got more guards at this point than they do front court players. Maybe we'll see a three guard type of alignment with Boyd and Basie and Shelton all in the game at the same time, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Mullins. 18 seconds left on the shot clock, so West Virginia's got 18 seconds to shoot the ball with Robinson fouled out of the game with Botkin injured. We do have the three guards, too, Basie, Boyd, and Shelton. West Virginia going to go to a little bit more of a perimeter game. Now, they can't be playing around too long. Shot clock on the left of your screen. Shelton off the pick. Oh, that's a great step out by Williams. They're in trouble. Three, two from 40. Air ball, UMass ball. That the step out, as you called it, that made the defense, that caused the turnover. Shelton coming off the double screen. A great step out by Harper Williams to force him too far away. UMass can take the lead. Here you see your game clock. Who steps up to take the big shot from outside, or they go back inside to roll and Williams. You got a mismatch with Barbie against Mike Boyd. You'd like to get the ball to the 6-6 Barbie against the 6-2 Mike Boyd. Shot, Shot clock still at 45. Harper Williams. Now it's Rowe beats him to it and scores. UMass takes the lead. Another offensive rebound. Now Gail Catlett, again, he's out of the coach's box. He's infuriated because that entire UMass possession up until the first miss by Harper Williams, the shot clock did not move at all. And he's got a legit concern. Well, he's got a legit concern, but, what do you but do he about can't it? go out of the coach's box. The only reason you're allowed to go out of the coach's box is for a correctable error, and the shot clock not moving is not a correctable error. Now, of course, if you're a coach, you can go up there and you can stand and say correctable error, correctable error, and if it isn't a correctable error, then you're charged with a timeout but I don't know how they can let him out of that coach's box all the way down in the middle of the court without calling a technical foul or at least charging him with a timeout. You're allowed to leave to talk about a correctable error, but if the official comes over and discovers that it's not a correctable error, then your team is supposed to be charged with a timeout. Well, Gail's in good shape here, though. Let's see what they come up with. I don't think we do redos here, do we? <laughs> well, he has a point, and that is okay. the shot There's clock no can move. There's no question. Neither the shot clock operator is very excited, or remember, this is the first event in this building. Yes, indeed. And maybe they had a problem with it. Certainly, uh, Gail doesn't want to hear new building, first-time problems. 
his club down by a point now after leading for the better part of this ball game. And actually, the shot clock really didn't figure into it because it wasn't like UMass held yeah. the ball for more than 45 seconds. They got it inside to Williams. Cal Williams Calip scored. Calipari working the crowd. And the crowd's been looking for an excuse to get into it. Mullins Maniacs. Right at the moment, what the officials are trying to do is to make sure that the shot clock is operating properly. Coming up, Saturday basketball here on ESPN, the Battle of Mississippi. Ole Miss against Mississippi State. Mississippi beat Mississippi State 69-53. Catch it at midnight. And followed by UTEP and New Mexico. All for you here on ESPN. What a finish we've got here. UMass by a point in the home opener. The Mullen Center. West Virginia had a nine-point lead at one point. They watched West Virginia, they watched UMass take a four-point lead. West Virginia took it back. Now it's UMass by a point. Inside. Nice job. Nice job by Mike Boyd off the cut from Basie. Good, tough possession for West Virginia. Harper Williams wants it inside. And a smart move by Mike Williams. Calls the timeout under some terrific pressure by that man, number 31, Mike Boyd. Back for the final 47.8 of beauty at the Mullen Center. We return for more in a moment. Welcome back to the Mullen Center. The Mullen Maniacs at work as they have been all night. Their ball club, the UMass Minutemen, down by a point to West Virginia. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. And uh, what do you look for here, Dan? Well, I think what UMass, you know, we've got 47.8 seconds. I wouldn't be surprised at all to have UMass take the ball inside. Harper Williams has been able to get it in there. So I look for him to try to do that. Lou Rowe went scoreless in the first half. He's got 12 in the second half. Number 15 at, popping out right now. Number 15. West, what a great job for UMass. West Virginia in the zone. Tony Barbie for three. No, sir. Can't get it. Look at the rebound. Rowe again. Rowe. It's Rowe again. Nice job. Phil Wilson, the foul on him. His fifth. He's done. So we've got three frontline players out of the ball game now. Here's Barbie with the jump shot. Again, in the zone defense, nobody blocks out Lou Rowe. That guy has just been a beast on the board. Oh, man, he is. Watch him. Look what great. He just gets very powerful position. Nobody blocks him out. He goes straight up, and with that power, is able to pull the ball down through the arm of Phil Wilson. He has been living large in the paint this second half. In virtually Crazy invisible Skelton in the first half. Just a tremendous rebounder. Lou Doing a Rowe great job inside. Rowe, almost a 75% free throw shooter. Botkin went out with the injury. Robinson fouled out. Wilson fouled out. UMass big, uh, make that West Virginia big people in trouble. Rowe, four for seven at the line. Big one here. Now think about this. Think about this. West Virginia now has to play that three-guard set. So the next time, I think you will see UMass go inside because West Virginia doesn't have the people to guard him in there anymore. That UMass and Lou Rowe, they need this one to tie. Tied at 55. We'll count it down. West Virginia's going to try to hold it for one shot. Gail Catlett has that one finger up. Got the right guy running the show, Marsalis Basin. Going to look for Boyd. Here's Boyd. Oh, that's a good, good decision by Boyd. You don't want to squeeze that thing off too early. Didn't really have the open shot. See your clock. Basie, Gale right, calls time a timeout. It's that clock down to 10.9 seconds. This has been a beauty. The finish ought to be something, too. We take a break and come right back for the final 10.9. the Mullen Center, everybody. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. There's our situation here. The final 10.9 seconds. Timeouts. West Virginia won. UMass 2. Both teams will shoot two from the line. And West Virginia has the possession arrow. And now, it's West Virginia's ball. Now, of course, with the game tied, UMass does not want to commit the foul. They want to play good defense without fouling. But what you've got to always be concerned about here, lots of times these games aren't won in the final seconds by the shot, but the rebound off the missed shot. So you got to play tough defense, no fouls, and you got to block out. West Virginia's got the three-guard look. Clear the side for Boyd. Boyd can take it to the hole, loses it. Rivera's Green loses it, and we've got a timeout. A timeout. They just get it. One second left. 
one second left. Oh boy, we come back after this break. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> All right, we're tied at 55, the Mullen Center. What a way to inaugurate the new building. Wow. West Virginia coaching staff asking for a foul on that last play. Bavarius Green gets the ball inside. But I guess that's a fitting way for this regular session to draw to a close. It's been a defensive struggle the whole time, and so you have an outstanding defensive series by the University of Massachusetts. As we saw John Calipari draw up that play, you know how UMass ended their shoot around today? Everybody on the team shot from half court. And so they don't really have much time to get much of a shot off here. Let's see what happens. Harper Williams, not even close. We got overtime. 55 all. The Mullen Center in its first game gets an OT. We're back for the extra session in a moment. They're playing our music <laughs> here on ESPN. Dave Simpson, Dan Bonner with you. This game has been terrific. This has been terrific. First game at the Mullen Center. Close to 9,500 here. And we get an overtime. And you think the advantage has to go to UMass with the I, big folks out of the game for West Virginia? I would certainly think so. Phil Wilson has fouled out of the basketball game. Ricky Robinson has fouled out of the basketball game. Jeremy Botkin has been injured. He is out of the basketball game. So West Virginia forced to go with a three guard alignment. UMass has been murder inside, particularly on the offensive boards. Oh, that's a what foul. a tough play. And that's a good call too. Bar B hustling, tried to get his arm over Marsalis Basie. And a foul on Tony Bar B. Well, he did get his arm over Marsalis Basie. Right? Got his arm over the back of his neck and forced him to the floor. That is his second personal foul. Not the kind of start in vision for the second <laughs> for the overtime. Marcellus Basie at the line for West Virginia. Six for eight at the line tonight. Adds another. John Calipari, good behavior since the 1706 mark of the first nice half. He picked up a technical. <laughs> Had to be on that best behavior. Basically good for two at the line. West Virginia 57-55. West Virginia man-to-man -man defense. Road cap is guarding row. So he's going to play him off, play off of him. Didn't see the pass. Sure did. Mike Williams threw it out of bounds. But when Rowe gets the ball out on the wing, West Virginia just playing back inside, doubling up Harper Williams. Nice defensive job. West Virginia one and one in overtime. First overtime set up for UMass. That's a foul on PG Green, and that's a good call inside. Green you heard battling Rowe for position. You, you, heard, you heard the contact, too. Fourth foul. Tonight's game being brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a Bud. And by Pizza Hut. Sometimes you gotta stop and smell the pizza. Dave Sims and Dan Bonner with you. From the Mullen Center in Amherst, Massachusetts, Lou Rowe to the line. You get another opportunity. Lose six of ten from the free throw line tonight. Brings you master within once. 57-56 West Virginia. Shelton. Don't forget West Virginia. 
Virginia using three guards. Foul trouble tonight. It's Wilson, Robinson up front, and Shelton, pulls short, long rebound to Marsalis Basin. Get a new 45. Mountaineers lead by one. Man for UMass. Terrific patience by both clubs. Road cap forces. And he chases. And will walk the floor. Foul on Matt Roadcap, his fourth. West Virginia's running out of guys. This is not a good play by Roadcap. Looks for the pass inside. Now Williams steps by him, but you see how he's floating toward the basket if he's going to stop and go straight up for the jump shot. But as he floats toward the basket, the ball has that really hard straight line, uh, the hard line drive look about it, so it bounces off hard, and then he makes the second mistake and goes over the back. West Virginia led by nine and then was cut by UMass. UMass took the lead. Here we are in overtime. Tied now at 57 on that make by Harper Williams. He's now six for eight at the line, 12 points. RB kept it alive and Rowe claimed it. Another offensive rebound. 16 for Lou Rowe, number 15 for UMass. He went scoreless in the first half. Basin, three, no, rebound, run down by Lou Rowe. That's what we talked about, the inside advantage by UMass. Milk some clock now, UMass. Minute men with the ball up by two. First overtime game for UMass. West Virginia one and one. Mike Williams got free. Rebound. Lou Rowe. Who else? He gets every rebound there is to get. What an amazing second half performance by Lou Rowe. Mike Williams in trouble. Good save by Barbie. Another good save by Williams. Talk about a shaky possession. 20 seconds on the shot clock. That's a foul on Boyd. It was Boyd. He's whistling for the foul. The foul was not on Green. The foul was on number 31, Mike Boyd. We'll finish in that game, that Illinois with the buzzer beater to beat Iowa. Team is at the limit. Tony Bardee goes to the line for the minute NC State losing to Wake. Tony Barbee at the line. Long, he's five for six at the line now. He's got eight points. Like, Makes the second. UMass with a three-point advantage. Big offensive possession for West Virginia. They've kept battling back the entire basketball game. They need a hoop here. Inside to Ricky Green. And he'll shoot the bonus. Makes the bucket and will look for the three-point play. He can tie it up. Lou Rowe. And Lou Rowe is just fouled out of the game as Green turns against Rowe. Rowe tries to block the shot, hits him with the arm. That was an excellent entry pass. Green's going to get a chance to go to the line and tie the game, but that's another. You now, this is the third guy who's fouled out of the basketball game, the first for UMass. What a super second half by Lou Rowe. Scoreless in the first half. Finishes with 16. Now, we do not have a timeout here, I don't think. All we're, all we're doing, John Calipari with a guy fouled out of the game, he's got a little bit of time, 30 seconds, to get a guy in the game. And so both teams going over to their coaches, taking a little extra time out here. The officials are now saying, let's go, guys, come on. Various Green will shoot for West Virginia. Let's look at John Calipari. 
John Calipari's team battling back from that early 11-point deficit gradually cut into the lead, and they finally went ahead of West Virginia in the second half by four points, but the Mountaineers responded. And here they've responded once again. Green can tie it. Well, that's way off. He does it, and the rebound to Dana Dingle. And UMass still on top. Green in trouble. An important defensive series now for West Virginia. They scored the hoop that they needed to score. Now they got to get a defensive stop. Mike Williams running the show. Dana Dingle, Jerome Malloy, Tony Barbie, and Harper Williams for UMass. Tracy Shelton, Marcellus Basie, Mike Boyd, Matt Roadcap, and P.G. Green for West Virginia. There's to be a triangle of two that West Virginia's playing on defense. Barbie is being guarded by Boyd. Malloy is being guarded by Basie. Everybody else is playing zone. Eight on the clock. Rebound to Green. Boy, that's a big-time rebound right there. Lou Rowe now is on the bench. He's fouled out, so he's not there to get that offensive rebound for you, Max. There's Shelton. No daylight. That's a tough, tough shot. Sure was. And a nice job by Barbie to tip it to Mike Williams. Not a good shot. One minute mark, and Mike will bring it back outside. UMass up by a point. Shot clock at 25. You see your game clock. Bottom right. Al Perry gets his team to move down. Try to get it inside. Harper Williams. Big hoop. Fourteen for Harper Williams. UMass by three. Final seconds. West Virginia needs a tray. Basie. No, sir. Rebound. Green. Short rebound to Harper Williams. That might do it. Get it to Dana Dingle inside ten seconds. Harper Williams. And that will put the exclamation point on the first win for UMass at their new Mullen Center. The final from Amherst, it's UMass 64, West Virginia 59 for Dan Bonner and our Amherst crew. I'm Dave Sims. Sports Center is next.